A reading from Luke's Gospel, the 11th chapter. Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins. For we ourselves forgive anyone who is indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. The words that we know better, those who are that are familiar to us, is our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. That was two Gospels. First Luke, then Matthew. If you're wondering why I picked those texts to talk about, it's because we find in Luke 21, our Gospel text, the need for prayer. I think that Making just a generalization, Lutherans have somewhat of a difficulty with prayer. I think that Lutherans, understanding the passive faith and justification that's given to us, we're passive when it comes to prayer. That's a problem because you can't passively pray. You must pray as if your heart and your life depended on it. Because it does. Our, our, our reading in Luke 21 right here shows us our need to pray. First it tells us to watch, watch ourselves lest our heart be weighed down with dissipation, drunkenness, and cares of this life that day will come upon us suddenly like a trap. For it will come upon all who dwell on the face of the whole earth. But stay awake, praying that you may have strength to escape all these things that are going to take place and to stand before the Son of God. Those words seem chilling to us, but right in the midst is prayer. I think, again, that we skip over prayer in many ways. And yet, when things are going to be as bad as they're going to get, when Christ is going to come to take us to our home, when the world begins to get really bad, very bad, apocalyptic bad, we better be praying for strength for our neighbor's strength, for the faith that Christ has given us, we pray. The Holy Spirit works in us and we pray. When, when bad things happen, we pray. When we lose a loved one, we pray. When we bury a child, we pray. When our fathers and mothers are sick, we pray. Or do we? Do we pray enough? I mean, search your hearts. I can't tell you. I can't be the one to tell you if you pray enough. I'm talking about the frequency. I'm talking about the passion in which we pray. I'm talking about from our very loins, gird them up and pray. Do we pray as Christians or do we pray passively as the world prays to the pagan gods of politics, of presidents, of other rulers? Voting, 
is not a sacrament. That's not to say that we don't pray for the world, but rather we Christians have a more pressing issue. The Son of Man is coming. We talked about this last Sunday. Advent, Latin for coming, and here we have it. The Son of Man will be coming in a cloud with great power and glory. When these things begin to take place, what does Christ say? Straighten up, raise your head, because your redemption is drawing near. Christ pulls no punches. He tells them what will happen. The Son of Man will come in a cloud and you will be judged. Literally it says in verse 36, you will stand before the Son of Man. You will be judged. And I want to ask this question, what will you have to say for yourself? Think about that. We're going to circle back to it, but think about it. What will you have to say for yourself when you are before the Lord our God? When He comes to destroy the earth? Listen to these things. There will be signs in the sun and moon and stars and on the earth distress of nations in perplexity because of the roaring of the sea and the waves, people fainting with fear and with foreboding of what is to come on the world. For the powers of heaven itself will be shaken. We think things are bad now. We complain about them instead of praying about them. And I guess you're right. But you're not this right. You're not apocalyptically right. So what will you have for yourself to say before the Son of Man? I repent. Lord, forgive me for I know not what I do. What will you have to say? And whatever you would have to say before the Son of Man, turn it into prayer and say it now. What's stopping us from praying? Praying with passion, with fervor. Not as if our souls depended on it. Or maybe, just maybe, they do. Because we pray in faith. What will you say? When we pray the Lord's Prayer, we come to this part. Thy kingdom come. And we skip right over it. And we don't think about it. Or perhaps we don't even know about it. What it actually says. Thy kingdom come literally means that you're praying for your own death. You're praying that Christ would return and we would die. And that we would be judged by Christ Himself. Does that scare you? Does it scare you that you will be judged by Christ? It shouldn't. It shouldn't. Why? I ask this question one more time. What will you say before God when He comes again and you're standing before Him? What will you say? Nothing. Because you have an advocate with the Father. Christ is the one who speaks on our behalf. Christ is the one who mediates to the Father. Christ is the one who allows us utterance and breath to pray passionately, fervently, with love. Isn't it great that we have that advocate? That same advocate, when He comes in clouds, with a cross on one hand, and the lilies of resurrection 
on the other. What will we say to the Son of Man, to God our Father? The answer is this. Christ will speak. He will say, I am the one who was incarnate and born of Mary. I am the one who suffered, died on the cross, and was buried. I am the one who resurrected. I am the one who ascended. I am the one who was given all dominion and power over the earth. And Christ looks at Satan and says to him, These are my people. Return from which you came. And to the Father, he says, Behold, Father, I have brought you your people covered in the blood of the Lamb. Behold, I bring to you the living and the dead. For these in whom I have given faith, those in whom I have justified, those in whom I have rescued for the second coming of Christ, I present to you, dear Father, your little lambs. And the Father will say unto us, well done, good and faithful servant. This week, I held the hand of Richard Mazak as he, as he was laying dying, I got to pray with him. And all that surrounded him as he begins to die is all of this. Do not let your heart be weighed down, dear pastor. Do not let the cares of this life entangle you. Let us pray together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into his temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And you know what he said to me? Because I didn't know what to say. He's been a pastor for so long. What could a person who's still green and wet behind the ears say to a pastor who is dying? And that this is exactly what he said to me. I even asked him, what can I do for you? And he said, you're doing it. Just be here. And I said, surely, Pastor, that's not enough. And he said this, these exact words. Do you think I'm afraid of death? And I said, I don't know. Are you? And he said, I have nothing but positive things to say about my death. I have nothing negative to say about my Savior. The only thing that I want is for it to be quick so that I can see my Lord faster. Pray with me, he said. I've never experienced anything like that. I've never gone to someone's sick bed, dying bed, and have someone tell me, to have someone preach me a sermon from the deathbed. Never have I seen such faith. When things are going bad, when we're faced with death, when we know 
our time is drawing near. When we bury our loved ones, when we bury our children, when we bury our fathers and mothers, what shall we say? Pray. Pray earnestly. Pray passionately. And from your deathbed, pray as Pastor Mazak prayed. I have nothing but positive things to say about death. I have nothing negative to say about my Savior. Pray with me, Gavin. Pray. As his last hour draws near, I got to pray with him. And he prayed for me. Go and do likewise. Amen. Now may the peace which surpasses all human understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus now and forever. Amen. Mm -hmm.